Hello everyone and welcome back. In the previous video we talked about while loops, which run code until a condition is no longer true. Today we're going to talk about for loops, which runs code pretty much a set number of times, is the way to think about it. The syntax for a for loop is very similar to a while loop, just with a different keyword and a little bit different inside the conditions. The syntax is for, open parentheses, and then you have three things inside this parentheses separated by a semicolon. I'm going to call them initialize, condition, each. And then you have the same open and close curly braces where is where you put your code. And the way this works is in the initialize, you initialize any variables you need to run inside of this block of code. Now these variables are scoped to just this block of code, so you won't be able to access them outside, which is perfect. Almost always, this will be some sort of an iterator which most people conventionally call i. So i equals zero is probably the most common one. So at the very beginning, it'll take a variable and set let i equal zero. It'll create a variable i and set it equal to zero. Then you have the condition. This will run as long as this condition is true. For This is just like in the while loop. For example, as long as i is less than 10. So i is zero, i is less than 10, so this will run 10 times. It'll stop at nine, it'll start at zero and go up to nine. And then this is each, or what happens basically at the end of each loop. Oftentimes this is i++. plus plus. What this will do is it will start at zero, it'll run until i is no longer less than 10, and after every time it runs, it will increment i by one. So inside we're just going to console.log i, and then close our brace. Notice, I don't have to put an i++ plus plus in here, because that's included right here. Let's go ahead and try this. Boom. It ran one through nine, so it ran 10 times. If I wanted to include 10 in there, I would have to put i is less than or equal to 10. And now it comes up correctly. So that's a for loop. For loops are very similar to while loops with just a few differences. Number one, it's they're generally speaking shorter because you don't have to increment your i or your whatever inside the loop itself. It goes right up, right up in here. So they're generally shorter, so you have less code to write. Also, this variable, these variables right here, are created inside the loop and only exist in this loop. You don't have to create them outside the loop, like you do with the while loops, which means you don't pollute your global namespace. So you have less global variables, which is always good. Hopefully you remember scope from your previous classes. Um, if not, don't worry about it. We're going to talk about it later in, a, in an upcoming video. That's something that's very important in the concept of programming. So let's look at another example. We might have a book. Const book equals the name of the wind. If you have not read this book, get off your butt and go get it. It's fantastic. And let's say I wanted to do pretty much the same thing as last time where I looped through and printed off every letter. For let i equal zero, i is less than book.length, i plus plus, console.log book i. And this is going to do pretty much the same thing that in the last video where we looped through Baby Yoda, this one's going to loop through the name of the wind. Go. There it is. The name of the wind. Generally speaking, this is, not a, this is kind of a hard and fast rule. It's not a perfect rule. But generally speaking, use a for loop if you know how many times you're going to want to run the loop. If you don't know how many times you're going to want to run a loop, use the while loop. Or if you want something to run indefinitely, such as like in a video game, if you've got your main game uh, loop, then you, you'll have to use a while loop. But whenever possible, you're going to want to use a for loop. So in this video, we talked about for loops. We talked about the syntax. It starts with four open and close parentheses. Inside of there, you have three things separated by semicolons. You have the instantiate where you are initializing your variables and it can be one it can be two it can be ten it can be however many things you want to happen generally speaking it'll only be one but i've seen it be two or three the second thing is your condition that is this will run as long as this is true as long as this condition is met this will continue to run and then you have the each or the iterator or whatever you want to call it which is the last piece of information and this after the whole code is run so it, right here after this last curly brace this piece of code will run. Usually 
This is just incrementing your um, the variable you instantiate at the beginning. That's not always though. Sometimes you're decrementing it. Sometimes you might be incrementing it by two. There's a variety of other things you might want, might want to do here. So those are three pieces and then you have your curly braces and your code inside of there. As always, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll be happy to help. Thanks.